The Damon Runyon Theatre. Once again, the Damon Runyon Theater brings you another story by the master storyteller, Damon Runyon. And this one, Social Error. And to tell it to you, here is Broadway. Thanks. Well, it is one morning along about two in the a.m. when I am sitting in the hot box club talking to this and that with Miss Midgie Muldoon. Now, Midgie is not a crow by any means, although she is only knee-high to a Pomeranian, a short one. I never see a better-looking doll. And it is well known on the stand that more than several citizens would like nothing better than to hear Miss Midgie Muldoon speaking soft words to them. However, she has nothing to do with the various high shots. So while we are talking, she stops in the middle of a sentence and says, Oh no, here he comes again. Huh? Here who comes again? Coming in the door, Jack Madigan. Oh, handsome Jack. Handsome Jack. No wonder he's so conceited. Couldn't you find a better name for him? Well, you'll have to admit that it fits. I can't stand him. Of all the people I can't stand, he's right on top. He sees you, Midgie. Please don't go away, Broadway, no matter what he says. Well, Midgie, handsome Jack is not a very good citizen to cross in any way. Don't leave me alone, please. What if he asks me to go? Not politely. I'll handle him, only don't leave me alone with him. So I stay because Midgie asked me to. But I know it is not going to be comfortable because handsome Jack Madigan always strikes me as a guy who is rough. And I always figured the best you can get out of citizens like that is the worst of it. However, I sit tight. And it is because I do that I am in on the beginning of a very strange story indeed. One which I will tell you in a minute. And now, back to the Damon Runyon Theater and the famous story, Social Error. Like I say, I sit tight, because Midgie Muldoon does not wish to be alone with handsome Jack Madigan. Well, it takes him maybe two seconds to come across the floor. He looks down and says, Hiya, Midgie. I was fine. Uh Broadway, how are things? Oh, ups and downs, mostly down. Yeah, you uh, you got something to do, Broadway? Not a thing, Jack. I am just whiling away the wee hours of the morning. Yeah, well, they are pretty wee by now, and you look tired. Maybe you better beat it and crawl in the kip. I am not sleepy. I think you are. No, I... He's not going. Well, you want him to stay? Yeah, he's the only one I want to stay. Why do you keep giving me the brush, Midgie? It's the only thing for dandruff. Look, there ain't nothing wrong with me. Nothing that not being yourself wouldn't cure. You got me wrong. Now, wait a minute. I've told you a dozen times I don't like you. I never will like you, so please don't hang around me. Don't send me flowers, candy, jewelry. I like to. All right, so you'll keep getting them back. Look, just talk to me for a while without giving me the knife, will you? No. Good night, Broadway, and thanks for your company. Uh, yeah, so long, Midgie. Uh, Midgie. What? Uh, I can maybe get you a cab? There are 30,000 cabs on the street. I can locate one of them. Like always, I am poison to her. And I am a 14-carat gold inlaid sap for making a play for her. There are a million dolls that would roll over and sit up if I give them a tumble. Well, Jack, do you ever think that maybe Miss Midgie Muldoon thinks that you think... She is one of those dolls? I can never figure dolls. Maybe you do like her, huh? Yeah. Yeah, Broadway, maybe I do. But you are not the only one she puts the frost on. The pale-faced kid, Red Henry, Big Sam. Bums, two-bit characters. Ain't one two in it with me. I see. What do you see? Maybe if you lay off being such a tough character for a while, she will think different. What are you giving me? Well, she will have nothing to do with anybody who is not legitimate. That is why I say I can never figure dolls. I can never... Nobody ne ever figures a doll, Jack. Hiya, Broadway. Well, well, Dave the Dude, sit down. Hi. What is your beef, Jack? Never mind. Okay, okay. Keep it to yourself. Uh, uh, we are just talking about Midgie Muldoon. Ah. Face base is still a long way off, huh, Jack? Oh, shut up. I'll see you later. <laughs> Just think of it. 
Handsome Jack Madigan souring up because of a doll. Maybe he is on the level. Jack? <laughs> like a corkscrew. Ah, look, Dave, I see a lot of guys. Tough guys, high shots. So? So? Each one of them has got a place inside where things can hurt. Not Jack. Maybe. Okay, maybe. But until I see that guy do something for somebody, something that does not figure to put him on a winning end, I say he is not level. And I do not blame Midgey Muldoon for passing up a case of measles like that guy. Well, somehow I figured that they the dude is wrong about Jack, because there is something in the way Jack looks at Midgey that makes me think here is a guy who is well lighted inside with what the poets call the old love lighter. He continues to be soft for her, and she continues to walk past him like he is someplace else. Then, it is about a week later in the hot box club, uh, which Dave the Dude owns. I am sitting with Dave and Jack when the scene is as follows. Nice crowd tonight. Very nice. Yeah, and it is certainly not the food that brings them in. You ought to know better than to eat in here. Well, I think maybe because you are a friend of mine. The sandwich will not be all rubber and wood. Hey, uh, Dave. Yeah? There is your friend again. Huh? Oh, the Mikhail dame. Huh. Every night she comes in. She is not choicy about her dancing parties. Mikhail, Mikhail. The high society stuff. Oh, yeah, Harriet Mikhail. It seems to me I remember her getting into quite a few newspapers for one thing or another. Yeah, one thing or another. Dancing with Red Henry. There is something I cannot understand. A doll with all the toy in the world, and she dances with tough guys. Uh, no offense, Dave, Jack. <laughs> She thinks it is smart, romantic. She goes back to her society friends and tells them she dances with a safe blower. I think if I wish to dance with a safe blower, and I do not think that is likely, I will pick a nicer one than Red Henry. Funny, ain't it? Here is this Mikhail thing. She can take a pick of any society guy she wants, but she puts on the eye for guys like Red Henry. So? So, here is a guy like Handsome Jack. He goes for a kid like Midgey Muldoon, who will have nothing to do with hot shot citizens. Let us leave me out of it, huh? Sure, sure. But it is still very funny. And to make it even funnier, there is a guy named Basil Valentine. That is a name or a greeting card? He writes things for magazines. Now, he wants to be tough, but is as mild as they come. He goes for the Mikhail dame who will have nothing to do with him. In fact, he never even meets her. <laughs> Everything is all twisted around. Yeah, it sure is. That Basil Valentine just sits here every night looking at the Mikhail dame. Uh, right now, she is looking at us. Yeah, ten to one, she comes over. You win your bet. <laughs> she is looking at you, Jack. So she is looking at me. So what? I see her look like that before. Jack, you are about to be romantic. Nuts. She does not look like a million to me. No, but she has a few. Hold it. Good evening, Dave. Oh, uh, how are you, Miss McCann? Just fine, thank you. I don't believe I've met this gentleman. No, uh, this is handsome Jack Madigan. Uh, Jack, Miss McCann. How do you do? Good. Uh, this is Broadway. How are you? I am getting along. I hope you don't think I'm intruding. Not in that dress. Ah, oh, thank you. Uh, sit down, Miss McCann. Thank you. Having a good time? Oh, a little bored. May I have a cigarette, Mr. Madigan? Help yourself. Light? Sure. So, you're the famous, handsome Jack Madigan. Yeah, real famous. Um, look, I got some work to do. Uh, enjoy yourselves. Yeah, see you later, Dave. Goodbye, Dave. N do you live near here, Mr. Broadway? Not far away. I was just asking. Why? No reason in particular. Where do you live, Miss McCall? Why don't you call me Harriet? Okay, Harriet. Why did you ask me where I live? No reason in particular. You're not very friendly, are you, Jack? Sometimes I am very friendly. Ah, I see. I... Oh, I do wish that man in the horn rim glasses would stop staring at me. Which one? That one by himself at the table. Oh, him, Basil Valentine. Every place I go, there he is. He annoys me. Is that possible, Miss McGill? What do you mean? There's nothing at all, nothing at all. I'm going to speak to Dave about that, that, that Valentine person. Or uh, uh, perhaps you'd do me a favor, Jack. Like what? 
I don't like that man staring at me. Oh? <laughs> Do you think it's funny? Sure, because if you think I am going over there and talk to Bad Basil, you are crazy. Talk to who? Bad Basil Valentine. Bad Basil? Sure, why, he will kill anyone quicker than you can say scat. That, that harmless-looking man. Miss McKyle, Bad Basil can scarcely sleep good any night he does not kill some guy. Jack, what are you saying? It is all right, Broadway. Miss McKyle here is a friend. We can talk about Bad Basil. But he, he seems so gentle-looking. Miss McKyle, I once know a hood who is so gentle-looking that the people mistake him for a spaniel. But he ends up in the chair at Sing Sing. Miss McKyle, you asked me a minute ago where I live. I am now going there. Good night. Oh, no, no. I... I'll go. Uh, maybe you would like to meet Bad Basil, huh? Well, um, yes, but later. Uh, good night. Good night. Jack, the sandwich you eat is not that bad. What is the matter? I fix it up for the guy, do I not? Who knows what will happen now? You are so right. Who knows what will happen? <laughs> Well, Jake thinks it is very funny that he tells Miss Harriet McKyle that Basil Valentine is a hotshot. Never does he imagine how this is going to affect him and Miss Midgey Muldoon. But it does, and in a very strange way. And how this happens starts one night in Mindy's when I am sitting there, and Dave the Dude comes over to me and says, I have been looking for you, Broadway. Well, here I am. What is on your mind, Dave? Uh... What are you doing night after tomorrow? If all goes well, I will still be breathing and maybe sitting right here. Why? Want to go to a party? Nope. I ask you to. I will be glad to. Good. Miss Harriet McKyle is throwing one. Harriet McKyle? Now, wait a minute, Dave. I belong there like I belong in the White House. A lot of your friends will be there. Red Henry, Harry the Horse, Mitzi, the pale-faced kid. What? Some of those citizens are so hot, it might be a farewell party before they leave on paid vacations at various institutions. I know, but she thinks it is pretty cute to line up boys like that. It gives her something to talk about. Look, Dave, I would like to do you a favor and be there, but I... She is a good customer, and I would not like her to feel that my friends do not appreciate her hospitality. <sighs> what time do I get there? Any time. Oh, uh, by the way, uh, where is Basil Valentine? What? Right? I do not know. Why? She wants him especially. Huh? This I cannot figure. She'll be up to her ears in rough citizens, so why does she want him? I think I know. Dave, this is going to be a very strange party indeed. <laughs> and how right I am, even I do not know at the time I say it. Furthermore, I do not wish to be at that party, but Dave is a very good friend of mine, and I like to do him favors especially since he is likely to resent it if I refuse. So, I go. And what happens there, I will tell you in a minute. Now, back to the Damon Runyon Theater and the famous story, Social Error. Like I say, I do not wish to offend Dave the Dude, so I show up at Miss Harriet McKyle's party. So do quite a few other citizens who are not in who's who, but know what's what, especially if it is crooked. I am very surprised to see Miss Midgey Muldoon there. So I ask her why she comes, and she says as follows. Dave asked me to come, Broadway. I always think you never associate with hot shots, Midgey. I don't, but Billy, Dave's wife, is a friend of mine. I couldn't say no. Yeah. I guess you know Jack is going to be here? Well, what if he is? Oh, I just ask. Is uh, he Miss Mikhail's latest? Well, not exactly. I think he might like her. If you will look at her now, you will see that she is more than somewhat interested in Bad Basil. Who? Bad Basil. Basil Valentine. Oh, you're kidding. <laughs> That's the man who always hangs around Dave's place. Yeah, but now he is Bad Basil. <laughs> I don't understand. Well, it is like this. Uh, hello, what? Broadway. Midgey. Hello, Jack. Excuse me, Broadway. Oh, uh, wait a second, Midgey. No. Uh, look, why do you not give me a break? Why don't you ask Miss McKyle for one? I am asking you. Don't. <laughs> 
I do not mind you brushing me, but do not laugh. It's very funny. Handsome Jack Madigan letting Basil Valentine beat his time. Huh? <laughs> the joke is on you, Midgey. As a matter of fact, I fix it up. I tell the Mikhail doll that Basil is a number one tough citizen. She believes me, and then I... You what? Sure. I give the guy a break. Well, aren't you the big humorist? Anything for a laugh. Oh, no way. That poor little guy thinks he's going big. What'll happen to him when she finds out? Well, why should you be going? Because I think it's a miserable trick. Oh, it is a gag. Uh, sooner or later, she'll find out what he really is, and the two of you can have a big laugh at him. Oh, look, Midgey, I, I did not mean for this to spread so thick. Uh, how do I know the dame is going to swallow it? Yeah, but she did. Now I'll tell you something. At first, I couldn't stand the sight of you. Then I thought, well, maybe you might be on the level. But this... Put me right back where I was. With that, Midgey walks away, and Jack looks after her like a dog that is lost. I know now that he's really level. Also, I know that he tips Basil to the gang, and this makes Basil happy because he figures the Mikhail doll will now fall for him. The next thing I know, I hear Basil telling her how he knocks off ten hoods one weekend while he is on a pleasure trip. And I see she is looking at him with some respect. But in the meantime, Jack is doing nothing but mooning around. Then, along about 2 a.m., I am standing with Jack, and the scene is as follows. Everybody has a good time but me. Jack, I wish to ask you something, and I wish to hear the truth. What? You are really serious about Midgey? Yeah, I am. Broadway, I, I gotta do something to show her I ain't too bad. I just... Jack! Hey, Jack. I have been looking for you. Okay, Red Henry, here I am. Look, I'm doing all right with the Mikhail dame. Will you stick your nose in? Go away. You get too much in the last glass. I'm telling you, I was doing all right. I hear about that gag with the Valentine character. I tell you, go away. You never do like me, so you do this, you queer me. You are right. I never do like you. Happy? But I'm going to tip the Mikhail doll, see? Why do you not go away and clean up? I'm going to fix it all up. Look, Red, leave the little guy have his fun. He is nuts about the dame. What do you care? I was doing all right. I don't like your nose sticking in. Go away. Get lost. Take a trip. You were sore because you cannot get the doll you want, so you queer for me. Shut up, Red. You were heated up for Midgey Muldoon, but you get the froth. Cut it out. Handsome Jack Madigan sitting on the back porch and the door's locked. Red, Red, you and I will take a little walk, huh? Uh, there is a terrace. I bet you've never seen New York from this high up, huh? I, I Shut bet... up, Broadway. He knows I am right. How does it feel to be chilled off, Jack? I will show you. <laughs> <laughs> Jack, look out! He's pulling a rock! Get back, Broadway! Jack, are you crazy? He would have drilled me. Shut the door, somebody! You shot him! You, you, you fool! You shot him! He is all right. I hit him in the hand. Jack, look. Maybe you better go. I won't take care of this. Red, are you all right? Uh, in my hand, that is all. There will be a terrible scandal. There will not. Listen, everybody, quiet! What happens here goes no farther. Get it? Broadway. Yeah, Dave. Get to the phone. Call for my car. Sure. You better beat it, Jack. Oh, look, Dave, I gotta explain. Handsome Jack Madigan, parlor tough guy. Oh, Midgey, I... I wonder what else you'll think up to impress people. Well, the little affair is hushed up because none of the citizens there wish to answer questions, especially if they are asked by gendarmes. And Miss Harriet McKyle is glad to listen to Dave the Dude because she does not wish the publicity. Red Henry is hustled away. And it turns out the shot in the hand is nothing at all because Jack is pretty fair with the rod and just shoots the pistola out of Red's hand. However, he figures he is all washed up with Miss Midgey Muldoon. Then it is one night and I, Dave and Jack are sitting in Mindy's when who comes up but Basil Valentine and says... I, uh, I'm very sorry to intrude, but I, I must speak to you. You? Look, you caused me enough trouble. I'm terribly sorry, but I... I've got to talk to you. Ah, let him sit down, Jack. Thanks. How is bad, Basil? I, uh... Well, that's what I want to talk about. Basil, I... do you not tell Miss Harriet McKyle the truth? No, I... I've let her go on believing I'm what you told her I was. So what happens when she finds out the truth? I, uh... I asked her, her to marry me, and she said she would. What? You are kidding. Now I hear everything. But, 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 but she, she wants me to correct something before we go away to be married. Correct something? What? Well, she, 
She says that Jack committed a, a social error when he shot Red Henry the other night. Jack, you, you've got to let me do something about it. If you don't, I'll, I'll lose her. <laughs> okay, I will go to her and say you made me apologize. But, but, but that's not enough. I've, I have to strike you or something. <laughs> okay, strike me. But in front of her... Basil. What, Dave? You go back and tell that dame the truth. I, I can't. Dave, Jack, Broadway, I... I love her. That much, huh? Yeah. You will get over it. No, no. Wait a minute, Dave. Uh, Basil. Yes? How would you like to shoot me? Jack, sh shoot you? Yeah, yeah, say in Dave's place, night after tomorrow. I am not interested in making a shooting gallery out of the hot box. I got an idea. Uh, listen, nobody gets hurt. You bring the doll to the hot box. Dave, close up the place to outside customers early. What are you getting at? Basil comes in with the Mikhail doll, sees me, pulls a rod, lets me have it. Oh, no, no. I, I might hit you. Not with blanks in the gun. You, you really do this for me? Sure. Why not? I'll never forget it, Jack. <laughs> Go on, now. Uh, beat it. Go on, get yourself a gun with blanks. Right away, Jack. Right away. Well, 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 how do you like this? What gets into you, Jack? Well, maybe... Maybe I know just how the little guy feels. At first, Dave is more than somewhat concerned about the whole thing. But then he begins to get a kick out of it. It seems that Jack will fall down like he is hit, Basil will leave with Miss Harriet McKyle, and everything will be fine. But as they say in books, quite a few things are liable to go wrong, and often do. Now, I and Dave tell nobody about this arrangement, and it comes up two nights later that we are in the hot box. The only citizens there are those we know, and this includes Miss Midgie Muldoon. I and Jack and Dave are waiting, and the scene is as follows. Now, you are sure everything is all right, Jack? Sure, sure. I get in touch with Basil this morning. He is bringing the dame here. I am standing here with my back to the door. You know, something tells me I would not trust that little guy with a dud firecracker, much less a rascal. Stop worrying, will you? Okay, get ready, Jack. Here they come. If it is all the same to you, I will step back out of the way. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Here he comes. Mm, the muzzle of the gun he is holding is going in circles. Madigan! Madigan! Yeah? Turn around. I do not want to shoot you in the back. Oh, hey... Do not shoot me, Bad Basil. You've made your last social error. Oh, look, give me a break, Bad Basil. Now you're going to get it. Jack, look out. Look out, Jack. Mitchie, get back. You... <laughs> Jack, please. Oh, 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 Jack. Jack, I... Mitchie, oh, you spoiled the whole thing. You... Mitchie, that is no bank. She is hit. Mitchie. Oh. I... Jack, he was going to shoot you. You stepped in front of me, Midge. Dave, she is hit. Is she dead? Please, is she dead? Well, what happened? I, this gun... Let me see that. Where did you get this? Well, I didn't have a gun. I borrowed this one from Red Henry. Red Henry? Midge, Midge, baby. Well, Red loaded it with blanks. I saw him. He, he thought it was a big joke. He, he was going to help me. He pulled the switch. Now, look. You get out of here. Go on. But the girl... I... We'll take care of that. And you, Miss McKyle. Maybe now you got enough of being cute. I didn't think he'd do it. But he did. Now get out. And if you ever come in this place again, I will patiently escort you through the door on the end of my foot. But I... Beat it. We, we, we'd better go, Harriet. And, and I've got something to tell you. Midgey, we have got to get you to a hospital. I... I'll be all right. But Jack, you... You're not hurt. You... You stepped in front of me. Why, Mitchie? Why? I, I... I held out as... as long as I could. Oh, Jack. Well, Midgey is only hit in the shoulder and turns out okay. And Dave fixes it so everything is smoothed over. Of course, no one is more surprised than Jack when he finds out that Midgey is in love with him. However, that is not the end of the story. The payoff comes later. And what it is, I will tell you in a minute. It 
It is a month after a little party at the hot box that I am sitting in Mindy's enjoying some marinated herring when I am joined by Dave the Dude, who sits down and watches me for a minute and then says, Nice sweating, eh? What? Oh, oh, Jack and Midgey's. Yeah, it is very nice. They make a fine couple. My Lou's a good boy. She talks him into going legitimate. Well, he's in love. We have got to make allowances for that. It is very funny that we do not hear from Basil Valentine and the Mikhail day. Oh, I almost forgot. Uh, they get married, too. She marries him? But she finds out about the whole thing, and he is far from being a tough citizen. She is so relieved to find out that Basil is not tough and is not apt to go around shooting people that she marries him. However, she takes no chances. Like what? It seems she will not allow him to associate with anybody over 10 years of age. And she will not allow him to hold anything more dangerous than a niblick. And so ends the famous Damon Runyon story, Social Error. Listen in again next week for... The Damon Runyon Theater. The Damon Runyon Theater with John Brown as Broadway is directed by Richard Sandville and the story is adapted for radio by Russell Hughes. Vern Carstensen is in charge of production. This is a Mayfair production. Thank you.